The United Nations Security Council issued a press statement on Thursday condemning the series of terrorist attacks that spread throughout Iraq on Monday, causing scores of deaths and injuries to civilians, including women and children, and worsening the damage to the already war-torn country. South South News spoke to the UN Ambassador of Iraq, Hamid al-Bayati, on the attacks. If you can just give us uh, some highlights on, on this unfortunate incident and series of attacks uh, throughout Iraq. We have read and we're hearing that, uh, you know, the range sort of is, is different. Let's say we're hearing 72 deaths, then we're hearing 90 deaths, we're hearing 200 casualties, then we're hearing 300 casualties. If you can just give us a synopsis of what happened on Monday wh and why at this time. Uh, well, first of all, uh, it was a huge attack, coordinated to several places, nine provinces, some of them with car bombs, some of them with explosives, some of them with silencers gun, and even with suicide bombers. Second, um, I think the timing, Al-Qaeda in Iraq um, threatened to come back to al zarqawi al zarqawi was the leader of Al-Qaeda in Iraq, who was killed back in 2006. So they tried to prove that Al-Qaeda is still there. Thirdly, in one of the places they went to a mosque, they read the names of some people, they took them out, they executed them, they said this, these people are dealing with Americans in Iraq. The Americans are going to leave by the end of the year. So this is just a pretext for Al-Qaeda. Mm -hmm. I think there are a new leadership of Al-Qaeda in Iraq. They try to prove that they are powerful. However, um, the number of casualties usually increase days after the explosion and the attack happened because some injured people who are critical could die later. Uh, the estimation is um, around 70 or 80 killed, but uh, more than 300 injured in these attacks. And um, we are waiting to have the exact numbers of, of the casualties. Um, in general, I was in Baghdad in July, and we had a conference for ambassadors from all over the world. The situation was uh, good. I was back in January also twice this year. The situation in general is quite normal. People go out for shopping to restaurants. Uh, they send their children to school. I went out in the evening, late evening, in different parts of Baghdad. I went to different provinces, not only Baghdad. Everything was normal and life back to normal. So this is Al-Qaeda trying to prove that they are there but they are not strong anymore, they can't have, a, they, do, they don't have any base in Iraq as they used to have in certain provinces, and their attacks is parodic and, you know, small attacks here and there. So you mentioned the seven who were killed execution style. Um, we also learned that an Orthodox church was was uh, attacked. Now, so this doesn't really play to the to the argument that it's a sort of a Islamic, uh, you know, let's say targeting of, of Muslims. So, what is the message that these insurgents are are sending? Well, tourism has no religion, no affiliation with any kind uh, of religion or anything related to God. They target churches, as you mentioned correctly. They target a church in, in Kirkuk. And they target all kinds of Iraqis, children, women, civilians, elderly people. So there's no religion whatsoever, whatever they claim to be. There is no religion which allow hurting others. All religions, if we read the holy books, the Quran, the Bible, the Torah, it says that God created us on one big family from one parent, one couple of, of a male and a female, and we should love each other rather than hate each other. We should understand and tolerate each other. So these terrorists and these fundamentalists, they try to target um, under the name of religion, sometimes any kind of soft target, we say. And that's a good sign of their weakness. If they're strong, they could attack military or police force. On the contrary, they attack a mosque, a church where civilians are worshiping God or you know children and women. So that soft targets means they are very weak. They are too weak to attack military and police. So let me ask you a question on institution building. We learned, especially when uh, Bosnia was at the presidency of the Security Council, that institution building, state building, right after a conflict situation is crucial to build stability in a country, right? And you know this just as a career diplomat. Why hasn't Iraq built a really a formal and steady and complete uh, government, especially now just uh, setting up their defense minister? Why? Why so late in the game? 
Well, um, a few days ago, the Prime Minister appointed uh, Dr. Saadoun Adilemi, the former Defence Minister, as an acting Defence Minister. This is a step forward. I think the problem in the past, and the Prime Minister has, um, um, told me when I met him in Baghdad, that he was waiting for nominees from different political parties and the groups. Uh, he waited too long. He can't wait anymore. However, the situation now is much better. And, you know, um, things need time to be built. Saddam uh, ruled over 30 years. The destruction is huge in the country. It's not an easy task. We start below zero. Now we are above zero. What percentage above zero? That's, you know, not very easy to, to estimate. But really, we are making progress. Could be slow, gradual progress. But now, under the pressure, the government is doing a lot, and the prime minister gave all ministries 100 days to come with reports. The assessments going on for the all ministries' conduct. Some of them are very good. Some of them are good. Some of them fail. Some of them poor. And he said he will take measures against any ministry who have poor conduct. He might change some ministers. Now he tried to trim um, the, the government to make it smaller. There is yesterday the parliament passed um, um, an act to reduce the salaries of the presidency and you know prime minister office and the parliament members. There is a progress. It's happening. Um, uh, I can see every trip the situation is improving. However, um, we need um, to go better to do better. We have a long way to go. Although really we came very very long way. There is fear that the defense uh, arm of Iraq is maybe not as strong. And then, of course, the U.S., uh, the final, I think, 48,000 troops will be leaving on December 31st. Do you believe uh, in your mind that the defense arm of Iraq is, in fact, strong enough to, to be without the U.S. help? Um, to maintain security in the country, yes. We have uh, Iraqi military forces and security forces, which is enough to protect the country against terrorism and insurgency. However, if we talk about an army which could defend the country against uh, an invasion or a war, um, we don't have an imminent threat from any country in the world. However, we have to build our country, and building the country need a need, uh, really long time, a lot of money. And Iraq uh, announced its intention to buy 36 F-16s, um, advanced airplanes, jet fighters from the United States. Now, these... Um, um, plans need a lot of training, maintenance, you know. So um, really we would need support for the future. However, I think the military and police force, all Iraqi security forces now are capable of maintaining security in Iraq and to handle any issue for internal security. What, if any, uh, messages have you heard from the UN or specific entities to actually help uh, this counter-terrorist uh, you know, measures for Iraq? Well, there is counterterrorism committee in the Security Council, and from time to time they, um, we contact them for help, and they are ready to help. Um, um, many countries in the world are helping Iraq, friendly countries, to build its uh, security forces. So really, I mean, um, um, when I went back to Iraq this time, and even last time in January, I haven't seen any American, any single American soldier in the streets of Iraq. It was all Iraqis. I went to the Green Zone several times to meet officials. It's all guarded by Iraqi security forces. This is good news that Iraqis are depending on themselves. Tax, Iraqi tax, they were everywhere in the Green Zone, you know, in the entrance of the Green Zone. And they were, of course, uh, always... Um, driven uh, by, by Iraqi soldiers. So um, I feel we are in much better situation, although we need some, some time to, to rebuild our military forces and our security forces. Thank you so much.